Oh, dude, I was following you on Instagram. Is your birthday on May 8th? Yes, sir. That's my birthday, too. So hey, happy get belated. Out of here. Yeah. Well, happy belated, champ. <laughs> Are you yes, guys tour- Wait, Taurus King? Yes, sir. Mm. Taurus King. Nice. <laughs> Taurus King. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get that tattooed, dog. Taurus King. <laughs> Cody wearing your classic spring garb, I see. Yeah, dude. <laughs> is that a new, is that a new Hawaiian garb. shirt? Or is that a, oh, no. This oh. one's like three years old. Ooh, the OG uh, status. Yeah, exactly. Nice. Usually my Hawaiian shirts, just because I wear my clothes so hard, uh, <laughs> my Hawaiian shirts usually only last like two to three years i have one that's like lasted five years but it's like the one that i wear to the lake that i don't care gets ruined you know what i mean Mm. dude i once gave you a blue fat farm hawaiian shirt I remember, remember that? that. Yeah, you've never worn it, I think. Oh, for sure. You wow, have? Jake has been keeping tabs on that shirt. Oh, yeah, because I that was one of yeah. my most sacred items. But now I want it back. Just... <laughs> <laughs> now I want it back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. But it's Hawaiian. Hawaiian, dude. I went kayaking on the lake for like five hours yesterday. I saw. It was fucking sick. That's awesome. Is that a good workout? I mean, lake kayaking is less like. Like, so there's obviously no white water because it's flat, but they're like, it's a lot harder. So I only own white water boats, which you mm-hmm. have to do a lot more work on flat water because flat water boats are meant to just glide. White water mo- boats are meant to like maneuver around and shit. So mm, that makes sense. It, it's like a lot. The paddling that we did do was harder, but we only paddled probably like, I don't know, a mile and a half or something. Mm, nice. We like paddled out to this beach, had a picnic and drink and drink a bunch of beers and smoked a bunch of weed and took a photo shoot. Was that your girlfriend? Paddled back. Was that your girl? No, nah, that's just my home girl. Oh, okay. No, nah, that's just my home girl. She, this girl's been like my best friend for like two or three years now. Look at this Weezer slime. I got I got Weezer alien slime. Whoa, really? What is that? Like, it's like the Nickelodeon slime, says, but with Weezer. On it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I. They were selling it, so I bought it because I'm a ride or die Weezer fan. I know you are, unfortunately. Unfortunately. (laughs) No, I'm just busting your jobs, buddy. No, I hear you. (laughs) I honestly, I do love like their first three albums, I think. Yeah, who doesn't? Those are their best for sure. And then they've had like a couple bangers since, but for the most part. Yeah, I'm not. Tr- I'm not trying to convert the unconverted right now. I'm no, just. Yeah, you're just, just announcing. Your <laughs> I think we're far enough along in life where if you're not a Weezer fan by now, you're not going to be. Yeah, exactly. But also, like everyone knows, like Buddy Holly and shit like that. So, like those are the real jams. I like their newer stuff, but it's you just because you're a fanboy. Yeah, I think, you know, I think if you gave it a listen, you might like it, but I'm not like, go out there and listen. Oh, yeah. I mean, I actually, I tend to, I didn't give their newest album a try, but like, they had that one album that came out, like, if I could be, it was like a super long title, if Um, you were something or other. If I were a rich man. It was like, (laughs) no, there is nothing. Oh, everything will be all right in the end. That's the one. That was a great one. You didn't like that one? No, I like that was that one was like their first good one in a while. Yes, and then I it think, was. And then I feel like after that, it was also their last good one in a while. Oh, <laughs> I would say that the album after that, the white album surpasses that and actually might be my favorite Weezer album. But Ooh. again, I'm not trying to convert. It's a very summer California album, I think. You know, yeah. you guys we're not, we're not listening to Weezer out here. No. You're not. I know. <laughs> I, I, even said, <laughs> I knew I was five yeah. minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. I don't have anything against Weezer. Honestly, I just never liked the way that dude looked with the glasses. <laughs> Seriously, he just he's, looked he's like an awkward dude. Yeah, he just looked like a little Rivers Cuomo. snivelly little bitch. I never liked him. <laughs> What's his name? Rivers Cuomo? Rivers Cuomo. Whoa, is he related to any of the Cuomos? I don't know. He might be. Oh, he very well might he be. He might be, yeah. 
That's but crazy. he was born. He was, I think he's born in New York, but he was raised in like a Buddhist like ashram or something. Whoa. I don't know. He's got an eclectic life. I like the name Rivers Cuomo. You're just you're still ruminating on that, huh? Yeah, yeah. this is a weird It's like, it's like River now. Phoenix, but with yeah, with an S, with an S, and the yes. Cuomo Rivers. Yeah, it's kind of a cool name. I don't know. Um, it's just a hippy dippy name. Yeah, it's a oh, for sure, hippy, hippy dippy. dippy. In uh, in Game of Thrones, Rivers would signify your bastard status. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And video. There we go. <laughs> what up? What up? Welcome, welcome. How you been, bud? What's up? Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Comics and Chronic. Uh, as always, I'm joined by my co-hosts Anthony Iannaccio and Jake FH. Uh, today, our guest is comedian Nico White. Uh, you may know him from True TV, Fox, Vice, AFX, Comedy Central. He's been featured on Just for Laughs Montreal Festival. He has two albums out, Marcellus on Spotify and Apple Music and Dark Out on YouTube. That is a special. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. And, only, and I only jump in on that. That's the only thing, like, that's the only one that I'll jump in on because, like, there's no official audio release of Dark Out yet. Oh, okay. okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So That's special. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dude, that was uh, that was great. Um, Thank you, brother. Yeah, no problem. What was it like doing an audio only just for like just for yourself, running your jokes, no audience? Mm -hmm. How did it feel? A lot of a lot, it felt like a lot of things, bro. There's um a part of you that feels crazy, mm. right? Yeah, for sure. But I really wanted to put something out. You know what I'm saying? Like I was supposed to do a, um I was supposed to do a special last year anyway, right? Mm -hmm. It was gonna be a lot shorter than that. But when that got when, you know, COVID came around, moved everything around, mm -hmm. I was just in this place of like, uh, everything just feels disgusting. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And there were no shows to do. And for me, I've never I had never been on stage for anything longer than I think two weeks. I had a few one time. Mm -hmm. So for that, for me, that shit was like hell. So Mm, watching yeah. the news and everything and just taking in all this negative information like you know i gotta do something if i feel this shitty i imagine what the public feels like right mm, for sure i reached out to um the pinch recording studios i told them about the idea i told um my Latin homeless people about the idea they liked it they were down let me do it um down there and went there and they let me shoot nice and that became dark out we actually met doing comedy the three of us met doing comedy in new york back in 2010 when i first met you uh we were doing we were doing that aci program yeah. <laughs> and you remember i'm pretty sure i met you at like one of their bringer shows or something like that it was the first time i ever met you in 2010 yeah, you were like 17 a I think. decade ago. <laughs> yeah, that, that sounded about right. <laughs> Whoa, so when did you start doing comedy? I started in 2007. Oh, wow. Wow. So how 2007. old were you? 2007. I was 14. Wow. Yeah. Damn. Mm -hmm. So what, like, you started at a super young age. What, mm -hmm. uh, what, what at 14 made you be like, yo, I'm trying to do, make people <laughs> laugh? I, you know, it's funny. I, I, it's hard to pinpoint what, what happened because we were in class and first day of school, I met a kid that was funnier than I was in conversation, right? <laughs> and me and, homie, me and homie sounded alike too. So it was really, really annoying. And we got to the end of the day and my advisory, <laughs> excuse me, my advisory teacher at the time, she said, does anybody have a talent they want to share in front of the class? So this girl named Esther, she went up, she sung a song. I'm sitting there and someone's like, you know, go tell jokes. Yeah. I raised my hand. I asked if I could. She let me do some time and it nice. worked. Nice. I fell in love with whatever that was, like right there and there. Mm. You know, nice. it was like, whatever this is, I, I really, really like it. And Miss Richardson would let me go up three times a week because we had her um, five or three times a week. So she let me go up three times a week. Then after that, that was in September of 07. So right after that, it started to be, okay, three times a week, and we would do a show at lunch for whoever wanted to go upstairs, grab their food, and come back down to um, 236. And then in April of 08, 
or March of 08, whenever Easter was that year, the very next Tuesday, I started going down to the um, comedy clubs and then just blah, 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 blah. Are you nice. from New York? Mm-hmm. Nice. Born and raised. Nice. Oh, nice. That's what's up. Yeah, between Harlem and um, the Bronx. Nice. There you go. Yeah. Shout out. Shout out the area. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, Anthony's from the Bronx. And I'm from New York, but I moved out to LA five years ago. So Got you. Just... Heck yeah. I hope you enjoy the sun. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I enjoy yeah. the sun. I enjoy the <laughs> legal marijuana, which is something I'm about to get to. Are as you partaking do, with us? As do we. Yeah. You know what's funny? I could not find anything to roll with like and oh, tragedy it's it's so tragic because Free base <laughs> only because i didn't want to i didn't <laughs> what <laughs> Ooh, yeah you crazy for real <laughs> I, know, I know i have a dutch in here somewhere i just didn't want to keep y'all waiting any longer to look for it <laughs> you know and my bong broke yesterday so i'm oh. uh, Damn. Oh, no. Do you have an apple? Yeah. <laughs> what happened? I yeah, was dude. talking on, I have a Harry Potter podcast called the Potter Hood Podcast. If anyone wants to check it out, Ooh, please do. Shout out. Yeah, yeah we'll yeah. check shout that out, out for sure. We'll put yeah. the link in the description too. Hell yeah. Appreciate you, family. So um, I was doing that and talking, getting to move in my arms and all, whatnot, and swipe and just hurt. Oh no! Oh. Yeah, it's one of them things. I'm gonna grab some gummy bears. But yeah, family. It was really, <laughs> <laughs> really, 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 really cool. Yeah, I remember seeing you posting. I think when you started the Potterhood uh, podcast, was that your first adventure into per- Harry Potter? No, man. I've no, you were a Potter. fan for a long time. For a long time. Nice books and movies. Right on. Mm-hmm. Nice. Nice. Yep, I remember when I used to cut school back in like seventh grade. I didn't really go anywhere but to my um old house and um the library. So go to the library. I need to be in this bitch for six hours. So half blood prints it is. Hell yeah. <laughs> That's actually my nice. favorite Harry Potter book. Out of all of them, I think Half Blood Prince. Good pick. Nice. Great, great pick, bro. Nice. Top three for me too. I didn't I didn't read it because I'm more of a crip guy, so it kind of rubbed me the wrong way that he was only half blood. <laughs> that's not hey true. man hey, i want you to know something yeah <laughs> what was that okay now i like you yeah <laughs> back in, I, I put myself back in defense mode <laughs> <laughs> So this is a podcast we like to uh, just uh, get stoned and talk about the nerdy things we love. Yeah, what no. other shit? I know I, I know from your uh, album that you put out that you're an anime dude. What's some mm. of your favorite shits on there? Hell yeah. Oh, man. Um, One Piece is probably the goat for me right now. Like, real big into that. Nice. Dragon Ball Z is up there. Naruto. Yeah. And I know, it's like, some people that are, like, deeper in the anime and manga than I am. Like, like oh, he's naming all the generic ones. But no. I truly do think One Piece is the greatest fictional story I've ever been introduced nice. to. What's, what's One Piece about? It's about um, a young pirate by the name of Monkey D. Luffy who wants to become the king of the pirates. Oh, shit. Nice. Yeah. And he leaves um, He leaves his hometown at like 17. It's made of rubber. And the objective is to become pirate king. And to, you wouldn't think if I showed you like a very small clip of it, you probably wouldn't think you'd be able to fall in love with a show like that. And I'd bet you $50 or yeah. an ounce of your favorite. <laughs> your favorite <laughs> strength. I bet you an ounce of it. That when you get past the first 50 episodes of One Piece, <laughs> you'll be hooked. <laughs> um, it's got a ton of seasons. Yeah, it's doesn't been it? around forever, right? Yeah. The, the joint has been around like. To understand the weight of that show, man, not even the show, but like the manga itself, the written the written work, mm. I'm all caught up. And I just read chapter 1012 last week. Damn, that's insane. Damn. <laughs> and this, mind you, this comes out on a weekly basis. That's and it's sometimes bi-weekly basis. So it's been in serialization for um, since 1997, I think, oh, wow. or 1996. And this joint has 
it's only like 50 million sales from Batman. And Batman started serialization in the 20s, bro. Mm. That's crazy. And on top of that, if I'm not mistaken, it's written and drawn by the same person all these years, right? Exactly. Yep. Damn. So that's just... Imperial Oda. Nice. And, and that's just like manga in itself, right? Which... Like American comics, sure, you know, writing teams, artist teams will change. So like mm-hmm. Spider-Man, he's been around since the 60s. So he has well over a thousand stories, but it's not like it's so it's such a different comparison. Like I, to me, it's much more impressive for one person nonstop for yeah, decades right. to just mm. stick to one story. So, yeah, I, I totally the see that. audience. To keep the audience as entranced as we are and to know the fan base as much as older seems to like. If anybody listening to this does anything as far as um, English language arts is concerned and all that stuff, script writing, right? Like the technical things that go into writing stories when it comes to characters and that type of shit, character arts, flashbacks, material older might be the greatest ever. Wow. Ever. Ever. If you watch that, there's the themes in that show that apply to regular life and the way that you magnetize to the characters, even if you hate them. Mm. Give give one piece a chance. It's better than Game of Thrones nice. and anything else that you've ever seen, and it's a complete fantasy. Nice. And once you get over the gags and just let it be itself, have a great time. Yeah, you're and you're not the first person I've heard this from. So, yeah, mm-hmm. I've heard that like almost not word for word, but like <laughs> similar. Like you give it the first, I think it was like 45, 50, 60 yeah. episodes, and you're. You're you're stuck from there. I tell you this: when you get to um, blah 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 blah, Lucy, help me. If you make it there and you know what that line is, then that's you'd already probably be hooked with, into the show. That's when you will fall in love with the show, and it will, it will have already built you up and broken you down and rebuilt really yeah, you up yeah. again. <clears throat> so if you had to, if you had to rate One Piece on a scale of uh, one to six, Joe Pesci's. Yeah. Uh, how, I don't know who, who's Joe Pesci. <laughs> Joe Pesci's a little angry dude you know, from, from like Home Goodfellas Alone. and shit. In Home Alone. I never watched Goodfellas, bro. Oh damn! damn. Now, I'm so not a movie buff. Oh, you and Anthony will be best I, friends. Like, I'd make you mad, <laughs> bro. Yeah. I'd make you mad with the movies I haven't seen. Like, feel free to toss them out. Yeah, I, I don't want to awesome. because I almost believe you that I will be. The fact that you don't know who Joe <laughs> Pesci is, that's crazy. Do you know who Robert De Niro is? <laughs> I, yeah, I know Robert. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. Crazy. Yeah. that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. As crazy as you feel right now, that's kind of how we feel about Joe Pesci. Yeah, yeah dude, we love Joe Pesci here at Comic Con. I Chronicles. understand. Yeah. I, but I, I love Sinbad. And not enough people respect Sinbad. What? Like goat, Sinbad's so. great. Okay, how many Sinbads would goat. you give it? Yeah, how many Sinbads? One to six Sinbads. Well, I'd give it all six, but I think you. <laughs> In order to be Sinbad, you have to be an underrated great, like greatest of all time. Sinbad is one of the only comedians I've ever seen that's made me go audibly out loud to another comic. Fuck, how the fuck is he doing that? Mm, nice. He was killing. I went to go see him like three times back to back at Caroline's a nice. couple years ago. And homie did three different sets, right? And we ain't talking like he ain't coming out for 20 minutes. He's doing an hour and 15. So he did completely different hours and the way All that he different do material? it is if, you know, he's uh well, yeah, he has ADD, right? ADHD, whichever one. And he'll go up and he'll just like, oh, lead me, give me something. You throw it, he just goes. Nice. Just goes. And it's like, all right, I know he didn't pay these people. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, you can't get this many people to go. So the way he was just able to like thread in and out of shit, great nice. to watch. Yeah, so one one of the goats, man. Does, does he have any like recent tape specials, or he just hasn't done? Yeah, oh, okay. um, Sinbad, um, where you been? Is uh, again, I don't, I don't know who like gives awards for those types of things, but they're wrong. They're so so <laughs> wrong. They're so <laughs> wrong, bro. Because Sinbad's where you been? If it wasn't nominated for something that year, it definitely should have been. Nice high praise for Sinbad. Nice. That was only a few years ago, wasn't it? A yeah. couple of years ago, yeah. I feel like I, I might I have seen that one. Yeah. yeah, was it on Showtime? Was it one of those or like H? It might have been on Showtime or Comedy Central. It was gotcha. One of those. Yeah, yeah. But he's talking about um how Twitter said he died <laughs> and he messed up because he didn't wait long enough to make any money before he revealed that he wasn't dead. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice. Mm-hmm. 
So yeah, check out the big dog. But yeah, one piece on um, Joe Pesci's mic, whatever you got. <laughs> <laughs> if the number is six, One Piece gets all six. Nice. <laughs> nice. One Piece gets all six. Now I want to know what other movies have you not seen. Throw them out. This uh, has me a title. Sh- Jurassic Park. Home Alone. Seen Jurassic Park 3, never really seen Home Alone. Damn. Okay. But I know Macaulay Culkin's um, from Home Alone, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I know that because of a little Wayne bar. <laughs> 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 uh, nice. <laughs> Nice. So you're uh, you're a big hip hop dude, man. <laughs> nice. Who are your favorites right now? Wayne um is my favorite right now, especially nice. if you ask Spotify. I, golly, I didn't realize how much I listened to that little thing twenty two thousand times. <laughs> wow, damn. Because <laughs> you, cause you know Spotify takes some. Um, it tells you, yeah, right? yeah, statistics. So. When it hit me, I was like, golly. <laughs> <laughs> so are the, you like in the top 0.1% of like Lil Wayne fans? Like something like that? Nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. It was crazy. But um, really, um, really dedicated artist that even though he's acknowledged as one of the greatest of all time, I actually think the, it depends on what you consider the greatest of, greatest of all time to be. But like, I always consider that the person to make the greatest impact of them all. And in my reflection as of late, maybe it just could be recency bias, but I don't think I don't think there's somebody that's had a greater impact on the genre as a whole than mm-hmm. Little Wayne. Because Drake's gonna end up being bigger than everybody. He's gonna be bigger than M. He's gonna be bigger than J. He's already he said he might already be bigger than J. Yeah. As far as music well, at least is like, concerned. Yeah. You know. So when we talking about that, like Wayne shared his prime. Oh, damn near gave it to his prime is split up between Nicki Minaj and Drake. Yeah. Mm. You understand? Those are his artists. He helped groom them. Yeah. If we talk an influence. Then, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My God. And it's not like Eminem's influence where like Eminem is yelling at everybody in the younger generation about, oh, this is why they're not as good as what they Yeah. It's like, yeah, we all, no one's ever done anything but respect Eminem, right? Yeah, only ever. So it's kind of like, like the old, like uncles, like I, I still got it. Which is like, we, we all know you still got it. <laughs> <laughs> right? You don't, you don't, you don't got to cut off MGK's arms before he reaches his peak. Let, let the kid. Let. <laughs> it's, it's, it's okay. It's okay. But with Wayne, it just seems more like um, it seems like he's still fighting for his acknowledgement. And he's put out more free quality music than the, most of the people. Tapes. Yeah, I remember those, man. He just did one like a couple months ago, No Ceilings 3. Oh, yeah, he did. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So you think about it was the, great, too. It was great. You think about the free music that he put out for his fans. And then you think about the the albums. His most recent album was um, called Funeral. It was like a uh, it was a concept album. You know what I'm saying? But still sharp. And we talking how many years later? This dude started when he was he started rapping when he was eight. But yeah. he's been on the scene since he was 15. The man is 38 now. And he's still spitting better than everybody he's on the track with. Yeah. You pull up any feature that he's had in the last last five years and it's going you're going to find over 100 maybe even 200 you ain't getting yeah. that from oh, jay for sure but i feel you like the only like i feel like the only thing with lil wayne more recently is like the last like big lil wayne song i feel like i can't i mean i i'm the wrong person to be like saying about about rap anything but like i feel like the last one i could remember is like uh the carter four maybe okay but I'm sure you also don't listen to Wayne a lot. And I mean, I was follow- probably don't send you well, shit. I mean, this was like, I mean, I'm thinking about like pre Spotify, like the albums that right. were coming out. Right. Yeah. Oh, so, I see and, what you mean. I see what you mean. So you yeah. might not even see it. His promotion ain't even the same as it used mm. to be. I actually think he it's crazy that his albums still go platinum and gold, but his promotion is kind of trash because he's a recluse. He doesn't do interviews gotcha, that, that yeah. often, right? You don't, mm-hmm. you don't ever see him on a breakfast club or anything like that. Mm-hmm. He doesn't do his own Instagram that much is obvious because 
nigga, oh, yeah. this is one of my biggest things, right? People got mad at Wayne for taking that picture with Trump in that tweet, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Wayne didn't type that tweet. Wayne yeah. did not type that tweet. And that was, if that was an endorsement, that was the weakest endorsement that I've ever seen in my fucking life. Let's do this just because, just because I have the time, right? <laughs> Trump, hold on, tweet. Because I remember people were getting on Lil Wayne's case for that. Yeah, I just want to see what everybody was so mad for. So I'm going to it to you. Now, you tell me if this is the type of vagueness you want in a tweet. Okay? Just, just let me know. All right. Just had a great meeting with real Donald Trump. Besides what he's done so far with criminal reform, the platinum plan is going to give the community real ownership. He listened to what we had to say today and assured he will and can get it done. What? I'm going to read it again. (laughs) Just had a great meeting with Donald Trump. Besides what he's done so far with criminal reform, the platinum plan is going to give the community real ownership. He listened to what we had to say today and assured he will and can get it done. What part of that sounds like a presidential endorsement? I'm only asking because I'm reading the words, right? And outside of the date and time that it came out, this if one of my friends gave me this type of endorsement to get into a... um acting role, I'd be really upset. That's all I'm saying. (laughs) This is the weakest shit ever because then you find out later that Lil Wayne got pardoned by Donald Trump. So if you actually read the shit where he says he listened to what we had to say today and assured he will and can get it done, he got his pardon. What does that do with being president? (laughs) Truly, I'm asking like, because you see like when people tell you what something is versus when you read it yourself. Yeah. Where's the endorsement? Right. He could have yeah. just as easily said, hey, I, I love this man. I endorse him. He, You know, he didn't say anything like that. That's true. And he didn't say it, I no, no way Trump. here does it say Trump 2020. <laughs> yeah. He, all he true. said was the man said that the platinum plan is going to get a community real ownership. He listened to what we had to say today and assured he can and will get it done. Well, that's the bad thing about like tweeting and not hearing someone like speak because you're going to infer your own yeah. tone. But also... Wayne ain't tweet that shit. <laughs> yeah, for yeah, sure. But people though. don't think like that. Wayne ain't never even look at this. Sh- oh yeah, for <laughs> These sure. These people are, stu- are stupid. It's one of it's one of his people, one of his team members. Man, if you go to one of Wayne's actual tweets, you could tell like his actual tweets are spelled like a blood would spell something. There's no C's. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh-huh. But yeah, I'm a big hip hop fan, and I'm one of my favorite arguments to get into is Eminem versus Little Wayne. My favorite. Oh, snap. Nice. See, I have no stake in the nice. game with either of them. I'm not really. I didn't grow up being a fan of Eminem. He didn't. I didn't have an angry mm-hmm. white boy inside of me, so it wasn't like I was too jolly. Fair. I was Fair. way too jolly of a kid to be like, "Yeah, I want to kill my parents." Mm-hmm. <laughs> like there was hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> you know the thing about the thing about M though that makes it such like a fun argument to have is that his fans give him a lot of credit for things that Wayne would never be allowed to get away with. Hmm. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And I, I I truly honestly think Wayne is a better rapper than Eminem. Right. So like what's that? What's an example? So let's talk about this song that they want together, No Love, right? Okay. And I remember that song. Wayne come in on that shit slot. I'm gonna give you a couple bars. Throw dirt on me, grow a wildflower, just fuck the world, get a child out. Yeah, my life's a bitch, but you know nothing about it. Like, come on, dog. Eminem came on that shit. What'd he say? Hold on, wait. We talking about no love. How did Eminem come in on that <laughs> shit? Hold on, wait. I'm missing a bar right here. But he said something along the lines of my nightstands. Are full of broken bottles. That's why my bars are full of open bottles. Ooh. Some no, no, no. I got the line of stuff. It's open bottles, broken bottles, some shit like that. But Eminem comes in on the same track, and it's just he just gets to be basic. You know what I'm saying? Where the only bar he had in the track mm-hmm. was get these whack cocksuckers off stage. Where the fuck is Kanye? We need him. <laughs> that's the that's the one bar. Throw yeah. dirt on me, grow wildflowers, fuck the world, get a child out of it. In and of itself is better than all of that. Mm. Yeah. It's deeper than all of that. 
But oh, M is so deep. It's so multi. So shut the fuck up. I feel like that Eminem album was like when he was phoning it in for sure before he started. Man, we we could pick any album. <laughs> Dude, I think Eminem. I'm a big proponent that Eminem is mad overrated. Mm-hmm. No, no, he's, he's a pretty a, good oh, lyricist. No, we can't say that. He's a, oh, he's, I'm not he's saying more he's, than a pretty good lyricist. He's one of the greatest. He just can't fuck with Wayne. That's what I'm saying. I'd put him in like, I wouldn't even put him in my top five, probably. That's fair. I can't hold you for your um, personal top five, but we talking greatest, like unbiased. He had the top 10. It don't matter what yeah, we think. Once, I, there's a Lil Wayne song. It's, I think it's called Ransom. He does with Drake, and he literally mm-hmm. raps the alphabet. <laughs> I told you I'd be paid by the little like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, Y, Z, Z, Top, A, S, V, Rock, and me and Drizzy both wrote on D, Top. Okay. I love that. But he fucking raps the alphabet. It's great. Man, I just found some new, a new joint. It's not new, it's old, but off a song called Grinding, where the man said, um, fuck 007, I work 24-7, I ain't got time to bond with no bitch. Ah! <laughs> Come on. Do I, do I have to explain no, Do I have no. to explain that bar? <laughs> do I have to explain that bar? F007, I work 24-7, I don't got time to bond with no... Come on. <laughs> Come on, bro. It's ridiculous. Even deaf bitches say hi to me. She tell a blind bitch and she say, I gotta see. Come on. <laughs> Come on. It's, it's just punchline on punchline on punchline. Yeah, well, uh, uh, Wayne is like 100% like king of punchlines when it yes. comes like his rapping oh, yeah. is just yeah. like punchline, punchline, punchline. Like, and yeah. then, like, you see people that are, like, top of the charts now, and even if you didn't, uh, even if you don't think that, like, he's one of the best or whatever, you can't deny how big he is, but, like, Gambino's yeah. rap is, like, insanely yeah. influenced by him, or Lil Wayne. Um, Absolutely. Like, his influence. Cam, Kendrick, Lil yeah. Baby. Yeah. He, he's rapping with his kids now, and that's another thing, is where... He was already a bit of a weirdo because he was so young when he started. <laughs> so you kind of started seeing people emulate him really early. I'm talking about when he was still when he was leaving the Hot Boys and all that. Like he had people mimicking him, right? Yeah. But then him still being so young, Jim Jones is telling the story about how like Wayne came up to Harlem and you could hear how his sound changed a little bit. It's like that makes sense. He was really only about 17 at that time. Yeah. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So you bring a 17-year-old New Orleans kid up here to Harlem, New York, for a summer, you're going to change their life. Yeah. The way, that, sure. the way that they talk, by the time they get back down south, they people going to be like, man, we, why are you talking like a New Yorker? Right. But yeah. he added that East Coast swag shit to his rap, and then 2004 came, and it was over. Yeah. Oh, he oh, was yeah. king of the world. It, it was over. If anybody like really wants some deep shit to listen to, and here's something else, a good difference between Em and um, Lil Wayne. How do I put this? Because I mean this in the best way, because these two are equivalent for me. It's like, you know, one and Eminem's not number one, but he's like prime. Like wherever Wayne is, he's the shadow of that. M's kind of privileged as far as like the way he talks to his fans. You know what I mean? Or his um, naysayers, but Wayne has always seemed a lot more appreciative of mm. all of it. It's almost it's like, yeah. you know, Southern hospitality versus like, you know, the 10 year old's rage. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, <Yeah. laughs> because Eminem put out that song, um, Stan, right? Where he's kind of talking about his crazed fan is after him and whatnot mm. and all that. It's so crazy. Kills himself. Well, Wayne put out a song that's unreleased. It's called um, Dear Ann, Stan's Girlfriend. You know what I'm saying? And just like, you know, making sure she's okay and all that type of shit. So, thank you. Real good person. Are you a fan of Big L? Come on, bro. I'm from from home. Well, that's what I was saying. Yeah. Big Big L. L. Big L is almost Big, Big L. Um, the originator of fucking like Big L just like, is punchlines and murderous punch. Like his shit is so, especially his. Uh, I mean, yeah. the, it, easy like ninety eight freestyle is one of the most best freestyles to listen oh, to. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. Oh, um, Cameron is great. Mace, 
Mace is a yeah, monster. Mace is and I'm glad people Dude, act Mace like is... Mace isn't a monster. <laughs> Dude, Mace is underrated. Just... Mace is super underrated. Because he preached. He underrated because yeah. he preached. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because he's it, cool with religion. And then you guys didn't like, welcome back. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Yeah. Welcome back. Welcome back. Dude, that song was a bad one. Was. Well, <laughs> yeah, right. Breathe, stretch, shake. Come on, yeah. man. There was like four good, good songs up that joint. And then, um, you know, basically, even when he shows up now, he's still rap crazy. It's just that. He ain't out there. He old living in Miami. He ain't paying, yeah, right. not paying income tax. So he's still doing okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Let me go grab what's left of my joint because this is making me mad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> go, go look at that Dutch. Get high with us, man. That's okay. We're going to crash in your apartment. What did you say? We're going to crash in your apartment. Who is? Me and Cody, right? Yeah. You can yep. do it. So you could be at work. Well, Use your bed. Oh, God. Yeah, we'll just, like, no burn comfort. it down. <laughs> yeah. just, just hide the gun, Jake, and that's it. Oh, God. Just oh, hide God. The... What you burn it down? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dang, I picked the great time to come. Just hide <laughs> the gun. <laughs> <laughs> I came back, and they talking about terrorism. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh. I, I hope the governor watching. I don't have nothing to do with that shit. God bless the cub America. <laughs> so Nico, do you have like any uh any favorite superheroes or shit like that that you really nerd out on? Of course, bro. I got um like I mentioned earlier, I got the Straw Hats, Monkey D Goofy, all those people. I have um yeah. X-Men is my favorite. I just had one nice. of my friends, they drew me a um a Wolverine wall art piece. So oh, I have nice. that coming in a couple days. Nice. I mean, bro, I'm a Big nerd. I'm a nice. big nerd. And the things that I nerd out about, I go all the way. You know, nice. even, even as far as um, THC is concerned, I roll, I can roll very, very good. So I'm up <laughs> going to smoke all them shits all the time. But I Thank can go, you. I can roll very, very good. I feel like everyone we talk to doesn't know how to roll. You guys don't know how to roll. I appreciate it. I, I, I just blunt. don't know how to roll a joint. Yeah, my oh, joint game God, is yeah, my, my blunt I can't roll a blunt for on, shit. Oh, see, I can roll a blunt. I, I can't I can't roll joints. Those oh my god oh my gosh. Yeah, that's where I'm at. Like I can, I can do blunts but that's so annoying. I can only roll yeah. blunts with a Dutch. I suck with literally. Yeah, that's the only else. time I can. <laughs> yeah, like when you have the leaf oh, and really? everything. Yeah. See, I mean, I've used in, in West Virginia. We like have to use whatever we can. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like certain you can go to a tobacco store and get whatever, but like the gas stations will be like, oh, we're only selling swishers and games or something like that. Collect games. That's yeah. just such a that's such a funny <laughs> a games. Yo, that makes it sound like you play it for keeps for real. <laughs> <laughs> you feel it? So I, I can roll up. My favorite things are the um the extra wide zigzags. Those are my favorite. Ooh, nice. You know what I'm saying? Them, them shits go hard, and it's almost impossible to like overload them. You you can get um if you have a quarter, you can put two of the extra wide zigzags side by side, looking together, and roll the whole thing in one of those. I call those the um those big boys, big boys, <laughs> big boys. Yeah. Uh, uh, so are you more of a sativa guy or more of an indica guy? Uh, man, I'm not going to hold you. I think the difference between the two is a lie, right? <laughs> so I don't really know which one. Uh, the body high over the head high. So indica over sativa, right? Yeah. I think I got that correct. Yeah. yeah. Indica is the body high. There you go. I prefer that. Yeah, same. Okay. You know, just not when I'm up high. Like if I'm high up in the air like off the ground i'm afraid of heights so that's when it becomes mm. so much do you like edibles yeah yeah 100 mm-hmm. nice. percent. what x-men are you fucking around with like who would be one of your main characters oh you know wolverine's up there but then when we go like to the other side i think they do villains the best man mm-hmm. one of my favorite yes guys, one of my favorite um relationships is charles and xavier and magneto hell yeah, yeah. you know because it's um when i found out later because I used to think there was this weird connection between them, Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. Yeah. You know? yeah. Then you find out, no, that's actually a thing. Martin yeah. Luther King is portrayed, his ideology is portrayed through um, Charles Xavier. Same thing with um, 
Magneto from Malcolm X. Yep. You know, I yeah, yeah. Jake, you brought this up early, early on in one of our first episodes. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That's better known. Fast. Yeah, I like. That's yeah. why. Also, that's why it's called the X Men because the Nation of Islam, mm-hmm. Malcolm X, they would get rid of mm-hmm. their their former name. So. And that's why they take their. Is that, is that no? Real? That definitely yeah, no. can't be true. No way. No, There's no way Stan Lee did that. That's the what nation the is inspired really? by. Yeah, because think about it. It's Malcolm X. Malcolm X was really? the only one who went by X. It was the Nation of Islam's way of getting rid of their mm-hmm. slave name. So the reason they take like superhero names, like mm-hmm. I'm Cyclops and not Scott Summers. I mean, obviously. It, mm-hmm. it, superheroes are going to have the names, but yeah, it's They're like inspired by that. No, but Jake, remember so that thing X-Men. I sent that art. The thing I sent you the other day, it was saying that Chris Claremont was the one to kind of, you know, make Magneto less of like a cheesy villain and more of the, like we're saying Malcolm X. Oh, that's fine. I don't mean it was originated by Stan Lee, but it grew to something. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I get, no, I get, I get the I comparison. Yeah. Time, nice. Man, I'm just loving hearing y'all be right or wrong about that. <laughs> Dude, we're always one of those yeah. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> If only y'all knew how right y'all were. <laughs> if only most people understood that those were the only options. Mm. <laughs> Dude, but yeah, so what villains? You love Magneto and Charles. What else? What other X-Men things are your jam? Man, X-Men Legends 2 is one of my favorite videos. Oh, I love that game. Hell that's yeah. That's such a good Apocalypse. game. Apocalypse. Yeah, that's yeah, the, one, right. the Apocalypse, Apocalypse one. Dude, Apocalypse yeah. is one of my favorite villains. How, but now tell me why. That's what's really interesting. Uh, I just like that he's this, like, uh, he, he he's just this prehistoric, like, he's the first mutant, prehistoric mm-hmm. oh, yeah, superpower yeah. that, like, basically is al- almost like a god. And he just is like, f- like, he's like Magneto to an extreme. Right. Yes. And he's basically yes, so on the X, not like on the X Men, but the way the universe is now, he's like, on the side of, you know, he's, not evil. Yeah, he's a part of the, some kind of X Men council, isn't he? Yeah, nowadays? really. And there's this oh, whole really? big the event X-Men's called still around. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, of course. Like they <laughs> they kind of revamped it recently. Yeah, I heard, man. They had to. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Like I think it was time for an update for sure. Oh yeah, definitely. Because what they did when they took everybody's powers, I thought that was dumb anyway. You know. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, that was like what house was that around House, house of, of M? M? Yeah. Yeah. Some crazy shit like that. The way Magneto did Wolverine that one time where he um ripped the skeleton out. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, that was sick. What was that in? Was that in I think that was like the Onslaught universe. Ooh. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, damn nice. Onslaught, who's like what? He's Professor X and Magneto fused, right? Mm-hmm. Oh shit. Yeah. Bad boy. Bad, <laughs> bad boy. And then you realize, like, that's not even the most powerful thing in X Men, though, because you still got shit like the Phoenix Force and yeah. all that. Yeah. You know, I was, I was going to say my favorite um little arc that they had in the animated series show was the M. Cron Crystal arc. You know what I'm saying? Where oh, they introduced um, the Shi'ar. Yeah, the yeah. fight against the Star Jammers, just all that, all that mm. type of stuff. I l- always love crew jams. Yeah, wasn't that uh, <laughs> Scott Summers' dad, Cyclops' dad? Mm, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, definitely was. Yeah, dude, that animated that '90s animated show is one of the best superhero yeah. things ever made, in my opinion. A hundred percent, from the theme song to the voice actors, like that, yeah. you can't find a better voice for Rogue. Like, I almost get upset <laughs> that they don't just let her voice actress lip sync. <laughs> well, not listening, but like, like dub it. Yeah, yeah just let her dub it, fam. Let them say it and let her dub it. Yeah, yeah. Because I like I I can't stand what Jennifer Lawrence did with uh, Mystique, bro. Oh, she sucked. Oh, Mystique, yeah. that was terrible. Yeah. You know she was such saying? a terrible. And it sucked even more because they, as she grew as a star, they had to make the movies more and more about Mystique. Which I think Mystique is a great character, and she does shine in prominent roles, but she doesn't need mm-hmm. that. Like they just misrepresented her as a fuck. I found this meme today. The top is like Jennifer Lawrence Mystique, and she says, "You guys always act like you're better than me," and it's every other Mystique below her, just like standing <laughs> at her. Oh yeah, <laughs> but, see, like every last one is better. Yes, like, exactly. 
the woman that played who was it? Uh, something Ramon, I think. Yeah, Rebecca Romaine Stamos. Stam- Stam- yeah, yeah. Dude, Dude, he's got a crush. Yeah, she was on. She was on Betty. Of course she was. Yeah, she was a certified. All, all, all I'm gonna say is that she was on point and she was sliding butt naked across floors yep. in 2001. Yeah. So yeah. So I don't. I don't even want to hear it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Crushing it. Speaking of which, we we owe some people an apology. Like, yo, Janet Jackson, the old yeah. generation owes you an apology. Uh, if you're listening, nah, they, they really do because. <laughs> When you think about all the trouble she got in, seriously, yeah, for something that she had nothing to do with, and Justin Timberlake yeah. got away scot free, his well, career only skyrocketed. Yeah, yeah, his career right. skyrocketed. You know, but you knew that was going to happen. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Her hers got the got the shield pulled off. Yeah, much like I don't know, man. I I I didn't understand what the big deal was back then. I was like, y'all ain't never seen nipple before. <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, it's well, crazy. Well, I've never seen her nipple before. Like, what, what was the big crime? And, but I mean, don't it look like other ones you've seen? <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely look like it definitely look like something I've seen though. <laughs> <laughs> I I can assure you. Yeah, yeah. It's like even when you think about politics, right? Like Trump was ridiculous, and people said that oh, well, you know, they got tape of him. Getting pissed on in Russia. That's why he acted so crazy. So it's like you realize, you realize that that's the case. Then that means that they can only control him because they know that we care enough about his sexual habits that this could be held over his head. Yeah, yeah. dude. Uh, yeah, I feel like for your average if that, person, if that's true, if it's true, yeah. They, I kind of hope it's true, but I don't that's ever want to see that tape. <laughs> specific, I would pay to see that. I saw Chuck Berry <laughs> fart in a prostitute's <laughs> mouth. <laughs> I'll definitely see someone peeing on Twitter. Why? Why did you see that? <laughs> <laughs> like a couple of years ago, this video Ooh. went around of there's like more than one. Two Cody, girls did you ever see these? It was like <laughs> oh, very much inspired. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, you about. don't know what I'm talking about? Oh, no. dude. This is a class, and it's real. No. It's him. Like, this, yeah. So there's videos of him pissing on a girl in the bathtub. He farts in the girl's mouth. And he's like, I'm Chuck Berry. You like that? R. Kelly? <laughs> Basically, oh, Chuck Berry. Oh, Chuck okay. Berry, yeah. Uh, he, uh, he was yeah, doing some R. Kelly that, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought he ain't in jail for it. No, he's yeah. a rock and roll he's legend. A, he's a dinosaur. What's his name? Chuck, Chuck Berry. Berry. Got you. Yeah. I'm sure he's the goat. Yeah, he's just gonna. He's got. He's got. He's gonna die anytime. <laughs> oh, you silly! <laughs> We're calling it here dude, and he's, now. He's, <laughs> dude, he's just so old. He's outlived everyone. Is he alive yeah. still? Yeah, he, I, is he? Yeah. I don't know if he is. Is he? I'm pretty sure he is. I'm about to he, say. No, I said, he yeah, died. But he, don't take my yeah, he died in 2017. Uh, oh, well, man. I tell y'all, uh, well, I, I'm late to the game. <laughs> 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 we said comic synchronic calls are here. Yeah, <laughs> three years later, three or years four earlier. years. Jesus Christ, <laughs> three. <laughs> that man has been dead for almost five years, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, he looking down on y'all right now, just shaking his head. You'll yeah. die any day now, man. <laughs> <laughs> if only you knew from your words to God please. what if he was alive and you just willed that to happen what if that oh man what if that just changed like right now oh. if, if that manifested that'd be crazy so uh, are you going to be touring anytime soon yeah man I hope to be back on the road like with some frequency by the bottom of the year but even if I'm not, I plan on flood making some content to flood the um flood the pages with, bro. Nice. It's time nice. for that. Um, all right, I'm it's about rolled up. Ain't no rush, bud. That's gonna be I want that to be the title of this episode. What? No rush, bud. No rush, bud. <laughs> <laughs> Those words have never been said more to me in my life. <laughs> I feel like it's because I'm always late, and mm-hmm. so I try to be like understanding of other people. <laughs> I you love know it. what I mean? Love yeah. it. I'm like the tardiest. I show up. Yeah. 
just I'm never on time. Cody's anymore. saying the words he wants to hear from us is what he's telling us. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. That's so funny. Hey Cody. Hey Cody. I want you to know, bro. I'm on your side. <laughs> Any anybody that's, that allow me the opportunity to meander this long without yelling, I appreciate it. Dude, yeah. I can honestly say sure. that I get it. While Cody, you are for sure notoriously late all the time. It always ends up being a blast. Yeah. yeah. See? Like always. See? That's why people will keep Cody around. Morgantown's a dope town. It's a college town. It's a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. So understood. Yeah. Understood. Hey. People like to get rowdy here. Oh, I, I don't know about rowdy. Yeah. I'll, West Virginia is <laughs> like what number or for years was like number one party school in the country. Really? Yeah. Get out of here. Hold I swear on, it was. It was crazy. We used to get tear gassed regularly for burning couches after wi- victories and shit. You know what's <laughs> funny? Now, some most times when I hear about people getting tear gassed, it, it ain't <laughs> shouldn't be tear gassed, right? Yeah, that's that deserved it. I wasn't a part of it. I, mean, I just, I, I know. <laughs> you I just lived enough. in the same town. Oh, now see, that's not right. Yeah, you know I'm saying if you just get in like residual tear gas because you were around. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I didn't. Uh, I mean, I only went to WVU for like two or three years, and then I was mm-hmm. like, man, fuck this stuff. I'm not gonna keep going into debt for some shit I don't really want to do. Yeah, and I hope that message is felt by anyone listening to this right now. Whatever you do, if it's trash, get out of it. For real, yeah, for Hell sure. Yeah, I agree with that one. All right. Now I am back. This is roll. Uh welcome back. We should have cued Mason's welcome back right there. Yeah. Ah uh, man, all the that would have been best, perfect. All the little Wayne best of me freestyle, whichever your YouTube can grab. <laughs> <laughs> so what else we talk? Dragon Ball Z, who's your favorite characters? Ooh, yeah. Um Piccolo, Go. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Vegeta. Trunks. Yeah. Trunks. Trunks. Chi Chi is a very consistent character. Doesn't get a lot of credit. <laughs> Boma has always been consistent. Um, and Frieza might be another one of my just most favorite chaotic evil villains. Oh, he's so fucking vicious. Man, yeah. especially that like first iteration of him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That first iteration of Frieza that was like beating Vegeta to a less than um a less than like easy to look at pulp. Yep. Yeah, that was a lot. Yeah. Definitely a lot though. I feel like the Frieza saga is probably my favorite. Yeah, yeah that's that's everybody's favorite because you get the Super Saiyan transformation in that arc. You mm-hmm. get you get Krillin dying in that arc, but like in, again, just a brutal way. You get Vegeta getting beaten up to a pulp and crying in that arc. You get yeah. the excursion to Namek, you get Zarbon, you get um you get nailed, then you force. Yes, yeah, it's, it's stacked. The Freeze <laughs> Saga is on is on point with some characters and moments. It's just so deterioratingly long at some points. Yeah, for where sure. it's like that five minute thing with for Namek to blow up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Damn, I was that eight. Oh yeah. Yeah. All right, so who's smoking with me? Nice. Y'all have something to light. Light and take a good 50 second pull with me. Oh shit. Let's now do it. Oh no, wait, wait, wait. Mm-hmm. Wait one second. Wait. Oh my god. I need to catch up. <laughs> my I thought I had more weed in my bung, but I did not. Ah, go ahead. I'll let you pack your pack yours. Okay, I'm ready. All right. Go to your long tail, you to stop. Oh God. That melted me. <laughs> oh God. Whew. I had baby lungs. I couldn't even that shit fucked me up. I felt myself melt for a moment. Uh you don't know I'm melt. I'm back. Dude, I did oh, a boy. dab hit about two weeks ago at my coworker's house. It was so mm-hmm. fun. It was intense, man. It was too intense. Yeah. I'll put, um, I don't know if you've ever had to dab oil. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. I've had that I've put in, in like the on the joint before. That's crazy. I'll be honest. Like, I don't like being that high. 
Sometimes, yeah. Every once in a blue moon, it works out perfectly. But three out of four times, Cody's having a panic attack. <laughs> yeah. Or just like going comatose. It's one or the other. Man, like, Cody, I, I, I wish you could have been around. What? <laughs> like 420. One of my Instagram pictures, people think that's a cigar and I laugh. Nice. <laughs> nice. Did you just stuff it? What? The no, cigar? No, that was the two um zigzags. Oh, the two yeah, XLs. Take, which yeah. which one of y'all got me on? Um, I do. Look up the picture, bro. It's recent. Oh, dude, I was following you on Instagram. Is your birthday on May eighth? Yes, sir. That's my birthday too. So hey. happy Get belated. Out of here. Yeah. Well, happy belated, champ. <laughs> Are you yes, guys Tor- wait Taurus King? Yes, sir. Um, Taurus King. Nice. <laughs> Taurus King. <laughs> nah, I'm, gonna get, I'm gonna get that tattooed, dog. Taurus <laughs> King. Right. It's yeah. gonna be the Taurus symbol with a crown on. Yeah, it. I like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. We'll get it. I go, I'll go with you when you get it. We'll get matching tattoos. Got it. <laughs> Got it. Ball on your down. So I met you said. Yeah, it's all good. I, I, I got a guy. I know a guy. See? <laughs> done and done. I'm a whole <laughs> So, what we going to talk um, now? We're going to talk comedy. What we talk? Because comedy is the thing I nerd out on the most. I'm not going to lie. So, okay. let's, yeah, uh, let's, let's talk comedy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, uh, you want to start with a basic question? Like, or let, let's start. Who are your favorites that are like coming up now? Who are your my favorites? favorites of- my my yeah. favorites of my people are yes. Nathan McIntosh. Mm-hmm. Ricky Velez, Phil Hunt's one of my favorites. Leonard Oops, Amini Imani. I love Jackie Fabulous. Oh my God, nice. Sue Barguwal has always been one of my favorites. I haven't, I haven't been able to see her live in years, but when she was over here, she's one of my absolute favorites. One of the sharpest I've ever seen with a pen. Um, Hadia Robinson. Uh, nice. but, 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 but if we're talking about like the young, the guys that are on the younger side right now, that I think are going to be beast. Um, Chike Robinson, Eagle Wit. There's a girl by the name of Brittany Carney that's fucking really dope and unique. Um, <laughs> oh, I missed one in my um, in my just like one of my favorite favorites, man, Adrian Lapalucci. Nice, uh, she's so funny, mm-hmm. so funny. Like relentlessly brutal in a time where people, I feel like, give or uh, give her a hard time, and she's just does not phased by it. They, they she just keeps. She does her shit, and that and that's the beauty yeah. of it, right? She yeah. does her thing, and she does it so well. And I, I get annoyed when. <laughs> nah, man, I really do because she, again, everybody that named to you is so dope, and some and some of them you've already heard about. You know what I'm saying? Some of them are already doing like fine, right? But yeah. what I mean, what I mean is, um, when you hear people say how hard it is to talk about things, and then I see her go up there with jokes, jokes that would like again brutal, but they're brutal. great jokes. So funny, and like, so well know, written. Yeah, yeah, and I don't know anyone else in that lane that's writing that vicious, that good, that often, that consistently for this long. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's no fluke. She's been around and doing that for years. You know what I'm saying? So I think in a time, especially when when they talk about females in any art form being dope at something, I just I don't know. I don't work for the I don't know too much about like the industry side of things, like the people that make the decisions, but on the stand up side, she's definitely one everybody else I mean are people that I think once everybody sees them, oh, it's over. It's over. Yeah. But yeah, all, all of those folks that I just named dope. And there's a lot of people that just aren't coming to mind right now. And probably as they keep going, they will. But yeah, all those folks. And again, there's so much dope out right now. Yeah. So much dope. That they don't, they don't have to complain about how hard it is to talk about everything. Yeah, I was yeah. just going to say, <clears throat> whenever stand-up comedy comes up in conversation or just like when it's not like you guys are like Mm -hmm. deep in it but Mm -hmm. i feel like it's always about like oh people getting canceled and whatnot but it's clear that there's ton like you just said there's a ton of stand-up stand-up people out there that Mm -hmm. are doing that's doing material that 
it has nothing to do with that and it's like it's not even what stand up is about not even that um it has nothing to do with that like the folks that complain about not being able to talk about anything it's like i've seen people touch on the topics that people say you can't touch and be fine mm-hmm. because we come from the generation of knowing how to talk to these people because we actually are of their generation mm-hmm. we're with them all the time you know what i'm saying yeah, we know how to navigate sure. them yeah. A lot of people that are yelling at the at the people that are offended are older than them. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So, yeah, it's harder for you to get. You can't say anything to these kids. Well, that's because you're their uncle's age. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's, yeah. that's all it is. Because even when you look at it, at the bottom of it, in some cases, most people are just asking for a certain type of respect. Right? Hey, yeah. if, I'm, if I tell you I'm this, just call me that. Yes. Right? Yeah. They probably would have been a lot less up in arms <laughs> if the folks talking to them would have just respected that first thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For example, if I tell you, like right here, right now, right? Let's say you come to my house, smoke my joint, right? Mm-hmm. And I ask you, hey, fam, I understand you got a cigarette or something. Do me a favor. Just don't light that in my crib, right? If you don't light it in my crib, cool. Next time you come over, and I'm smoking, I might even consider letting you smoke. It might be all yeah. cool because you respected my wishes the first time. If I tell you not to smoke my house and then I see you like your shit, everything you do after that is going to be way more, it's going to get a much more extreme reaction than it would have gotten if you hadn't done that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All I ask you to do is respect me when you just met me, right? So I don't know. I think Dude, that's that a great analogy. I, I like that a lot. Yeah. yeah, I think so, some of that stuff is overblown, man. And I think it's time to expose the people that actually know how to talk to these people. <laughs> yeah. They talk to them every day, mm. you know, because there's a whole new wave of people that are out here, you know. So if you listen to this podcast, go look up all the folks I mentioned, but then go find your favorite comedian because they're definitely out there. Yeah, I was just going to say, like, I'm so clueless about the stand-up scene now and i'm um, that's literally what i was thinking in my head i'm whatever comics you guys just listed i'm checking every single one of them out yeah fam yeah bro and uh, again it's so annoying because there's so many yeah. and i'm talking about that are really 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 dope mm. yeah you know like I, so i grew up on like watching yeah. like comedy central presents all the time you guys remember that show? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's how I like got introduced to stand up, honestly. Nice. Mm-hmm. And I would yeah. religiously watch that show. So there are stand ups on there that like, I remember, like, you know, Patton Oswald, who's, I, he didn't start there, but like I remember this dude as like someone I, you know, I'm like, who is this guy? Just and that another. Had to be how many, and that had to be how many years ago? Like late 90s. So Patton Oswalt is what fifty now, mm-hmm. maybe yeah. like maybe even late forties, early fifties. I don't know. Yeah, but if that's twenty something years ago, right? I mean, you saw him when he was in his l- mid to late twenties. Yeah, yeah. You need that absolutely, and yeah. you need that that matches the energy of the people that are actually out living and all that stuff. Right. Yeah. Like I watched a lot of um I watched I watched a lot of everything. You know what I'm saying? I didn't have cable, so I missed a lot of Comedy Century for the most part. Mm. But mm-hmm. I watched all the Def Jam, I watched all of the sitcoms, I watched all of like, you know, the late nights that would come on and all that type of stuff, right? And something that was evident was that the people that were performing were around the age of the audiences they were in front of. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Even the big stars, like you look at the kings of comedy who are all older, but their audience match that. Right. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You look at Martin Lawrence at the time. There's a reason why Martin is still one of the most highest resonating sitcoms right now. And it's because for the black person that was in their 20s, it made sense to look at Martin. He looked yeah. like them. He sounded like them. And in some ways for us right now, he built your sense of humor. Right. Yeah. But again, he was close to your parents' age at that time. So it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Right now, everybody that's yelling at the kids for how sensitive they are are almost 20 years older. But yeah, I um I think there's a lot of great, a lot of great talent running around right now. You know, it would be it would be dope to have 
the stand up opportunity as far as like volume wise that they had in the earlier generations, right? Yeah. Because yeah. th- this, these generations right now, like the people coming up, they don't get a lot of credit for how much they had to build on their own and how much they have to bring to the table. You know what I'm saying? Where your following in a lot of cases does matter or your lack of a following in a lot of cases does matter. It's a big consideration for some folk, right? Dude, this was sick. Dude, thank you yeah. so much. And seriously, yeah. Yeah. Thank uh, you. seriously, really appreciate you coming on, man. That was awesome. Appreciate y'all. I, I definitely will hit you up about booking you to come out here. Yes, man. Let me know. Yeah, I'd love dude, to. For sure. I'll even bring the squad with you. Hell, Hell nice. yes. All right. So let, let me know the details. I'll talk to y'all soon. Do you have anything beforehand that you want to promote coming out? Hey, yeah, yeah. Plug any shows or anything coming up? You know, it's funny. I don't have any road dates that are that far out ahead for me to plug right now. But I will say this. Ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed me, please check out my special. It's called Dark Out, D-A-R-K-O-U-T. That is on YouTube. Coming soon will be the audio version, the album of that. I might call it Dark Out, but I'm most likely going to call it Dark Tapes. And I'm going to release the A side and B side of that if I do that. You know what I'm saying? Because there's actually a lot of material that you don't see on Dark Out that we laid. Right? Nice. So Dark Out, the recording that ended up on YouTube, is out of that one is out of an hour in like 30. So I'm going to keep a lot of what didn't make that. But before we bought in the um, Frank Sinatra style microphone, I did stand up the regular way, right? Uh, you know, still no audience, but, you know, me and the microphone with different jokes on those two takes. So I'm going to take a couple of those jokes that, did, that didn't make the um, final special, take some of those, take all of the audio of Dark Out, and put them both, like the A side to be what people saw on YouTube, the B side to be the shit that I wanted to add in that didn't make the um, final special, like the deluxe nice. cut or whatever. Nice. Hell yeah. All right. And then after that, I'll put, I'll say it on this because it'll make me do it. Um, I'm starting an interview show called Interviews with Miko White and hope to start doing the live interviews in person soon. And I'll be putting full episodes of that out on Instagram and YouTube by the end of this summer. Nice. Cool. nice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, shit. Pressure. Yeah. Pressure. Yeah. Right. <laughs> shall be what it shall be. Thank y'all so much for having me yeah, on. Thank you. Thank you. This was a Seriously, good white, this everybody. Was a blast. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Hi, you're listening to Comics and Chronic, and I'm Jacob H. I'm Cody Cannon. And I'm Anthony Iannaccio. And you can tune in every Thursday to hear new episodes of Comics and Chronic. And make sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Comics and Chronic. That's Comics, the letter N, Chronic. We'll see you guys next week. Woo! Peace.